Hello, hello, hello. I just love giving you these video tutorials. <laughs> I'm Menopause Taylor, making sure you can manage your menopause your way. And there are some things that all women want for managing their menopause, regardless of their preferred options. One of those things is avoiding a spine, hip, or wrist fracture from osteoporosis. So this is video number 201, and it's the sixth video in our unit on osteoporosis. If you haven't watched the others, please do so before you watch this one. If you have my book, either the first edition or the second edition, all of chapter 29 is on osteoporosis. And today we'll discuss the symptoms of osteoporosis. It's in the section of chapter 29 entitled Symptoms. Of course, for any disease, it's critical to know the symptoms of that disease in order to recognize it early. And recognizing something early is the next best thing to preventing it in the first place. So if you want to know the critical things about the symptoms of osteoporosis that will enable you to diagnose it early, watch this video. You've already learned from me that there are 22 symptoms of postmenopause. I presented them way back in video number 11 in the very early part of this menopause education. And in the unit on a heart attack, you learn that there are all sorts of symptoms of heart attack in women, most of which women are unaware, unfortunately. But you realize that knowing the symptoms of a heart attack in a woman was the very key to recognizing it early enough to avoid dying from it. And osteoporosis is no different. If you have no idea about the symptoms. There is no way you'll be able to prevent it, recognize it, or avoid fracturing your spine, hip, or wrist. So let's address the symptoms so that you won't be in the dark about them. And you know that my favorite thing to do is to start with a quiz question. <laughs> so here it is. <laughs> Early signs and symptoms of osteoporosis include A, bone pain. B, muscle strain. C, stiff joints. D, hump back. E, back pain. F, poor posture. G, all of the above. H, none of the above. I, B and C above. J, B, C, and E above. Which of those would be your body's way of telling you early on that something is wrong with your bone quantity? Well, here's the quiz question again with the answer in bold. Are you surprised? Does it seem odd to you that none of those is an early sign or symptom of osteoporosis? Actually, they're all late signs of osteoporosis. These are the things that happen when it's too late, when you've already got advanced disease. My goal is to make sure you know what to expect before you have advanced disease. Well, here's something that will seem odder still. There are no early signs or symptoms of osteoporosis. It's what we call a silent disease. In the unit on heart attack, video number 184 was on high blood pressure, and you learned that it too is a silent disease. A silent disease is any disease that doesn't produce any warning signs to indicate its presence. It's there, but you don't know it. And as it gets worse and worse, you don't know that either. So you don't know that you need to intervene and do something to prevent the outcome of that disease. In the case of high blood pressure, the outcome was a sudden stroke or heart attack. No warning, just bam, 
a sudden stroke or heart attack. With osteoporosis, the outcome is a fractured spine, hip, or wrist. And we have a special name for the fractures that occur suddenly from osteoporosis. They're called fragility fractures. A fragility fracture is a fracture that occurs with minimal trauma. In other words, it's a fracture that results from something that would not normally cause a fracture of normal bone. For example, here are some of the things that cause fragility fractures in postmenopausal women. Some of these things are going to really shock you. Spine fractures are often caused by sneezing, coughing, sitting down in a chair, getting out of bed, straining to pass a bowel movement, or shaking out a rug or towel. Hip fractures are often caused by tripping over the edge of a rug, misstepping up or down a curb, going upstairs, going downstairs, tripping over a long gown. Wrist fractures are commonly caused by slapping a table as a gesture of emphasis or even joy, clapping your hands, or twisting or turning your wrists. When I said they are due to minimal trauma, I meant minimal trauma. Actually, most of these things wouldn't even be considered traumatic at all under normal circumstances. These are the things you do all the time without ever considering them risky in any way. So what you have is a situation in which your normal activities cause fractures. It does not take anything unusual or extreme to cause a fracture if you have osteoporosis. And a fragility fracture is the first sign or symptom of all. Can you imagine a disease in which you have no idea that you even have it and the next thing you have is a fracture? Well, that's precisely how it happens. Now, there's something else I want to emphasize. When it comes to osteoporosis, you sustain a fracture when you fall from standing height. Now that sounds like a mouthful, falling from standing height. What does that mean? Well, it means that you fall from your own height when you are standing. If you're five feet one inch tall or 155 centimeters tall, you fall with your feet on the ground and the top of your head at five feet one inch tall or 155 centimeters. You may even fall from a height that is lower than your standing height. In other words, you aren't up in a tree or on the roof, or on a ladder. You're just standing. You don't have to be like Humpty Dumpty and sit on a wall. You don't have to fall from a distance. Instead, you fracture your spine, hip, or wrist by just taking a little spill. Now think about this. You've been falling all your life. You fell dozens of times when you were learning to walk. You fell dozens of times when you were learning to ride a bike. You fell dozens of times when you engaged in any sport or physical activity. And all those times, you just got right up, brushed yourself off, and went on your merry way. You didn't fracture your spine, hip, or wrist. But now, when you do the tiniest of things that normally pose no risk at all, you sustain a fracture. But one of the things that bothers me greatly is that over and over again, I hear women justify why they sustained a fracture.
and their justifications are completely ridiculous. Women who fracture their hip by tripping over the edge of the rug in their own home will say, well, anyone would have fractured their hip in that circumstance. No, they wouldn't. They would have jumped right up and been fine. It's as if these women do not want to believe that they have lost enough bone to put themselves at risk for fractures. It's as if the denial of all things menopause goes to the bone, literally. It's bad enough that there are no early signs and symptoms to function as a wake-up call that you don't have enough bone. But for goodness sake, don't ignore the obvious fact that you are deficient in bone when you actually fracture one. If you haven't done anything beforehand to prevent bone loss, at least wake up and start doing things to prevent more bone loss once you sustain a fracture. So the problem with osteoporosis is that you have no signs or symptoms to tell, that, tell you that you have it until you sustain a fracture doing normal things that would never cause a fracture if you had enough bone. So what you've learned here today will be pivotal in understanding a lot of the videos that follow this one. Remember, you are dealing with a disease that occurs as a direct result of estrogen loss, which causes bone loss, which produces no symptoms until you sustain a fracture. That, my dears, makes osteoporosis one of your biggest worries at menopause. You cannot afford to be lackadaisical or cavalier about any of this. Because you may not have to be like Humpty Dumpty and sit on a wall, but when you fall, all the medical profession's surgery and all the medical profession's medical men will not be able to put you back together again. In this unit on osteoporosis, I will present everything you need to stay on top of this. Just watch these videos in order and you'll be in good shape. So that's where I'll stop today. Next week, I'll tell you the prognosis of a fracture from osteoporosis. In other words, I'll teach you what typically happens after you've had a fracture. If you need a one-on-one -on -one consultation to address this or anything, go to menopausetaylor.me to schedule one. I do them with women all over the world using Skype, FaceTime, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, and the phone. Schedule one sooner rather than later. I can help you prevent a fracture. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'll see you in a week. Bye.